Cults manipulate people by instilling fear, causing them to become vulnerable and dependent on them. They create or they instill fear to their followers, to the congregation. They make people feel that any negative situation in their lives is as a result of witchcraft and spells set against, sent against them by their enemies. Therefore, their liberation can only be when they visit these cults or these teachers. They make people feel that you have so many problems and these problems can only be fixed by them. Any negative situation you are going through, it is because of a certain person, a neighbor, a friend, a relative, family member has caused you to live in that state of negativity. And therefore, they create fear in you and they offer a message of your solution. Unless they remove you from that, unless they dedicate you, you will find yourself not having a solution. And this is a bondage to many believers and slavery, which is idolatry by itself. Because these followers look at this person to be the king of kings and lord of lords on earth. They look at this particular cult, cult teacher to be the only solution and they don't go anywhere else. Allow me to say people can travel from very far places eh, looking for this man of God in quotes. This cultic teacher in quotes. They travel from all over. I'll be mentioning a few from the, I mean, as we move closer to the end of this teaching. So friends, our fear makes these people to thrive. They thrive by instilling fear in us. You have been cast. The problem you are going through is because of the, your mother, because of your father, because of this and this. And you live in that state of fear forever. Of course, when a doctor tells you, I can see your heart is not pumping well, there's a problem. The, many, the, many, the question will ask the doctor, so doctor, what can I do? What can I do? Then the doctor does what? Gives you an appointment for surgery or examination. So when they instill fear in you and you look at that, and it, since you are fearful, obviously you ask, so what can I do, man of God? They are called man of God. What can I, what can I do, man of God? Then the man of God will do what? Will tell you what you ought to do. They talk about dedication of families. Because for the prayer to be offered for the family, it must receive a, I mean, the, 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 the man of God must receive a certain gift specific for dedication of family, dedication of animals, dedication of farm, and they dedicate everything and anything for you to operate in blessings uh, as perceived. If you have to do poultry farming, dedication of poultry, poultry farming, dedication of your cows, dedication of your chicken, dedication of your farm, dedication, every dedication. But the agenda is to gain from every dedication being done. Whereas you and I know the prayers made on this altar is final. And when you come to kneel before the Lord and you raise up your voice and we pray for you and you pray, we are canceling every plans of Satan against you. For no weapon formed against you shall prosper because you believe in him and you trust upon him. Every burdens were broken at the foot of the cross of Calvary. Marks of cults. How do we identify them? How do we know them? The marks of cults. Marks of cults. Number one, extra biblical teachings. We can identify them by their extra biblical teachings. Cults like Mormons, Mormons teach more revelations from the Book of Mormons claiming to be from an angel. Book of Mormons claiming to be from an angel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, the Bible says, As we have already said now, I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. The Bible condemns and is teaching, telling you very clearly, if, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. 
There is only true gospel that you are taught. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, in the book of Galatians, Paul is talking about no other foundation. No other foundation except the foundation laid by our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plague described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. Very clearly that we should not take any word from the Bible or the teachings of God or add anything. Therefore, the Bible is the word of God. It remains our standard measure for character. It is a standard measure for human character, and no man, no woman can add anything on it. Actually, the scripture is inspired word of God. Inspired word of God. I know people talk about revelation. I've had a new revelation. Forget about new revelations. The Bible is final. The things you are hearing is not a revelation. Revelation is the inspired word of God revealed to holy prophets of God. The things we hear are not revelations. And I know that some churches can add more words. This is a new revelation. This is a new revelation. Another identity of cults is false basis of salvation. False basis of salvation. Remember, I've said, how do we identify them? The marks of cast was number one, extra biblical teaching. So if you find anyone with a teaching that is extra or watered down the word of God to suit his or a personal interest, please be observant to that kind of teaching. Be observant to that kind of teaching. Another mark is false basis of salvation. The Bible teaches that salvation is only by grace through faith in Christ alone. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. Through Christ alone we receive our salvation. Unfortunately, cults teach there are so many methods of salvation. Perhaps by giving money. Perhaps by through those dedications. You are saved. Perhaps by serving or giving service to God. Some by acts of mercy and compassion. So long as you have given some food to some needy people, like my Mayo, it has moved you from one level of your spiritual to another. You must get born again by confession in Jesus alone. So they are the, the, the teachings of these cults, or some cults teach that salvation can be obtained through other methods, which is a lie. If you observe very clearly through, I mean, as you scan around the country, people are called for ministry, but not for salvation. How many have seen that? You are called for ministry, not salvation. Nobody is even asking you about whether you are born again or not. But he is asking you if you are going through that trouble. Come. Then, after even the perceived deliverance, people go home the same way they came. Nobody is told about salvation. So, you can identify them when they have other means of salvation, affirmation of other methods of salvation, other than the Lord Jesus Christ. We and I know very well that our salvation is found in no any other person but except through Jesus Christ and through our confession to him. You may donate lands and pieces of land to the church. You may donate money. But until you are born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. The, the gifts of mercy given to many people, acts of mercy, is a good thing, but must be a fruit of your salvation. Maybe I don't know what's happening. Amen. Can I hear amen from somebody? Others affirm baptism. Bora umepatizwa, umaukoka. Baptism. Church membership According to Armstrong's church, they believe if you are a church member, you are born again. Armstrong's church believes that if you are a church member, you are born again. 
participation in communion table that one turns into literal blood and cleanses sin. That people believe in that. Kama ulikuwa na dhambi kuja ukunywe hii divai na hiyo inatosha. You take communion and it has cleansed of your sin. That's what they are teaching. So you see these are cultic practices. Whereas cults differ from one level to another, it is very important for you to scan through even the Christian cults. Some don't do the deliverance thing and the whatever brainwashing people and whatever miracle, but their teaching can be misleading. They may look like a sound Christian church, but their teaching can be misleading. You and I know very well that uh, baptism does not wash away your sin. Neither the communion table does not wash away your sin, but it is in remembrance of the mission that happened on the cross of Calvary. In remembrance of what you did by accepting him to be your personal savior is what you are remembering here in keeping in command to the scripture. Basis of judgment after millennial period will be solely the work of the works they do during this period. And these who believe in this are the Jehovah Witnesses. Teaching cultic practices, Jehovah Witnesses. Others say that salvation is by character, moral values, and spiritual insights. This is, is a belief by Unitarianism. Unitarianism. Salvation is by character, moral values, and spiritual insights. That's salvation. Character. If so if you are looking like a good man or a good woman, that's salvation. Well, because our. Ukosawa na mungu, that's salvation. You look to be good. You look religious. That is it. You and I know. You must accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior so that the good works is as a result of what has already happened in your spiritual life as you grow in your Christian journey. Number four, how do you identify them again? Elevation of personality. Elevation of personality. Cults claim special powers and experience above other Christians. They seem they have all the power above other Christians. They claim to be special messenger sent directly by God and speak frequently with him, direct. Their leaders claim to be directly speaking to God and they come with a specific message direct from God to a specific person in the congregation. Man of God, and the, and the people are responding, man of God, yes, man of God, yes, man of God. Prophesy. How many have heard those things happen in this country? God is telling me this happened, which is a lie. They give themselves divine titles. Examples, Messiah on their tour. The mightiest prophet of God, Jehovah Wanyonyi. Messiah, yes, Jehovah Wanyonyi. Yesu of Tongareni, examples of such kind of people who are cultic in nature and they give themselves special titles because they are elevating their personality above every other denomination and they do not associate. They guard their offices so high that even access is not easy for a common person except you must pass through and pass through and pass through to access this person through levels of security. Examples of such is that uh, William Bram, Bram, Branham, he started the cult of Branhamites, Branhamites after claiming a star appearing to him at baptism, baptism service which made him claim to be the second John the Baptist. It's a cult. House of Yahweh claimed and announced the date of for the second coming of Christ sometimes back in the 80s, which was never, or which never happened. New Jerusalem Church in Kangware announced Jesus was coming to Kangware one time in life. And people gathered around Kawangware waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing how people are deceived and they are brainwashed? Actually, Kawangware was full of people waiting for the return of Christ. You and I know a certain period again, the house of Yahweh declared the second coming of Christ and people were digging holes to hide. If Jesus is coming, you should be happy to be received. They were digging holes to hide under the ground because the world was coming to 
an end. Mrs. Mary Baker, founder of Christian Science Church, claimed to be the woman of Revelation chapter 12 with the key to scripture given to her by God and saw herself as more closer to God than any other person or a minister. Simon Malchior called himself Messiah Ondeto, leader of Legio Maria, made all, made all followers of this sect carry his photos all over the streets, even up to now. How many have seen the photos of, of Messiah Ondeto? How many? Yes. Kuna photo inaweko hapa. All, all over, and people walk with it. Even the cult, New Jerusalem Church of Kawangwari, I've just spoken. People are walking with the photos. All over the photos of Mama. Yes. Allow me to say, people can begin very well as good Christians. They begin a church, a Christian church very well. But as time goes on, they deviate from the truth and it becomes a cultic church. Their foundation could have been so good, good intentions, but later they fall a prey and become a cult later. In latter day, latter days. I can mention and mention. Even in our current situation, we see people buying stickers. That's the power. We see people buying holy water. We see people buying anointing oil, believed it to be now the power from the man of God who has laid hands on that oil, on that water, on that sticker, on that photo. During COVID-19 season, we saw so many of them. Actually, I spent much time uh, because there was no physical church. So during COVID, I did a lot of research. I spent time researching about this on television just to see the deceptions in the country. And I recorded a number of them. You know, my, my, my family were asking, why are you watching these things? <laughs> my wife was asking why I was watch, watching those things. I knew the reason why I was watching just to gather information and have the facts about the false teachers in the country. Even those who are standing on the mountain saying, God, would like to touch somebody. Wamebaki watu wawili, nipeleke maombi kwa Yesu. Watu wawili, watume, miatatu yao sahi. Maombi kwa karibu kupelekwa kwa Yesu. And they could ring the bell just like Makanga or a Matatu Taut calling passengers on Mbaki watu wawili tuende. Mbaki wawili tuende. Wakisha kuja wawili mebaki moja tuende. Kikuja moja mebaki watatu. This guy kept ringing for the whole day. I've received your 300 M-Pesa. Any other person, mebaki moja, I present the prayers to God. Those are cultic teachings, congregation. Deceased from them. Number five, Mark or identity of a cult is financial exploitation. See Oyabure, they have, you have to spend financial exploitation. They receive contribution from followers, attract favor from I men, they, but they receive contribution from their followers. So they structure their organizations to intimidate, cause fear, threats or, of death or disobedience. They attach a price tag on every petition to God. Yani, mbegu ya sacrifice. Mbegu ya sacrifice. And it must be a certain figure. Very, very magic figures, yeah? 310. 310. Is it 210? Is it 110? Those magic figures. Some of them claim that they know how to take your name in the book of life. Take your name to be written in the book of life. And they want to say that they can confirm whether your name is there or not and help your name go in the book of life. Some are coercive and manipulate to receive material gains. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 3. They coerce their congregants to receive material gain. The Bible says, but there, that's Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies and even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Anyone? That's First Timothy now, chapter three, verse three, chapter six. First Timothy six, verse three to five. 
If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound in instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teachings, he is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies about words. Uh, that result is in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt, corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means of financial gain. First Timothy 6, 3 to 5. Another mark of a cult or false teacher is denunciation of others. Denunciation of others. So if you find this denomination, they are always speaking negative about every others except themselves. Please be very keen on that. They speak against Christian churches of sound mind and doctrine since they feel their deception is being exposed. They feel their deception is being exposed. So they speak negative about every, I mean, about, speak negative about any other Christian faith. Instead of preaching the word of God, they spend time giving stories and discussions, discussing other ministries and religion in a discrediting manner. They are threatened by the planting of true, authentic, evangelistic churches. They fight you. They know their faith is threatened. Their strategy is threatened. So they fight that church very much. A lot of opposition you may encounter because they know people are going to be enlightened to the truth of the word of God. They don't associate or unite with other Christians and Christian organizations and bodies. They are solo individuals. Unclear doctrine number seven, uh, identities, unclear doctrines and syncretism. Unclear doctrines and syncretism. They alter their doctrines to adapt the changing times and situations. They make it difficult for their followers to understand and evaluate their teachings they confuse them and brainwash them, making them become defensive to any external attack to their beliefs and faith. Very protective. Their followers may not understand clearly their teachings. They don't, they don't accept questioning of their teachings because they are brainwashed. And their followers become very much protective to their teachings. Attempt to ask their followers any question concerning those teachings. You may receive tantrums and curses from that follower of these cults. Even the leaders of these cults, they threaten their members. If they reveal any secret in public or to any other person, their life is in danger. They choose only parts of the scripture that speak to their interests and twist with the wrong interpretation to fit their teachings. Allow me to give a few directions on how to deal with them. Now that having understood how to identify them, how do we deal with them as I close because our time is not on our side. How do we deal with the cults? I think all cults is part two. We shall deal with it later in another, another time. Mature spiritual, spiritually. Be mature spiritually. How do you deal with the cults? Be mature spiritually. Spiritual infancy is dangerous to growing Christians as they become easy targets to cults. Therefore, ensure congregation, you read the Bible, you understand the Bible, you grow to spiritual maturity. That is the solution of overcoming or dealing with the cults. Question every teaching. Question every teaching. Understand. Go back to the scripture. Be the Berean of the day. Go back to the scripture. Don't worry. These are our, our visitors coming from Afleo in the house. One as a few. Amen. So don't worry about who, which church is this. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is Afleo just trickling in in preparation for the great ministry here today. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for that. They, uh, another thing is that stick to one church where you find true and sound biblical teaching. Usikue, a city hopper or a church hopper. You are in Kangware, you are in Dandora, you are just visiting those churches. Please 
stick to one church you believe is teaching you sound doctrine. Don't meander here and there. Don't waver here and there in various kind of teachings because you are feeling a solution is found there. You will get confused by these people. Be a member of a Bible study fellowship to grow and add with others and be established and be rooted in the word of God. Evaluate every teaching against the scripture. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. Be the bereaan of the day. Be the bereaan of the day. On relocation to a new church, confirm their doctrines, confirm their statement of faith, confirm their teaching. If you are relocating from thicker town, perhaps you are going to Nakuru, you are going to Edore, that's where you are going to live now. Please, before you make a choice of a church, evaluate their doctrine, their statement of faith, their teaching before you join. Take time, don't be in a hurry to be wooed in by any faith. You do not have any background of Walk and live by the Spirit of God, who will guide you in discernment of true teachings. Be an ever-learning and ever-growing Bible student. Be an ever-learning, ever-growing Bible student. Why are, what are some of their practices? Holy water, anointing oil, stickers for power, photographs, car bazaars, sale of car. Unataka gari? Unawiziwa photo ya, ya bazaar. How many have seen those things? Prophetic. Prophetically. They sell. They go to a car bazaar, they take the photos, they sell to you, and you buy, because that's what you believe in. <laughs> Soil to own plots. Wengine wanauza mchanga. Unataka plot? Kuna mchanga imefungwa kama sukari kwa makaratasi. Unataka, if you want a plot in Nairobi, you go to purchase a package of some soil of Nairobi plots. Well, well dedicated by the man of God, in quotes. Well dedicated to purchase a plot. And so that people, buy, if people are buying those soils. Eh? They take to their houses and they keep on just trusting upon the Lord for that. Possession. Physical possession. They are told that physical possession leads into the spiritual possession. And therefore they begin with the physical. Anointing or anointed clothes. T-shirt. Maleso, vitambaza kichwa, zawamama, handkerchiefs, wallets. Do you want money? The bishop is selling wallets. God cannot give you money if you don't have a wallet. You must have a wallet to keep the money too. I mean to, to, to keep the money. So they sell wallets. Those wallets are brought to church for sale. So that you purchase the wallet by faith. Money will come in that wallet and you put in your pocket. Those are false teachings. Where do you find these things in the Bible? Dedication of handkerchiefs. Allow me to end there because of time. We shall continue with the part two of this teaching. Those are all cults. You have just handled cults. Be aware of the operation of the cults in our society today. Question or homework. Name some of the cultics in the society today. Name some of the cultic teachings or cultic uh, faiths in the society of today. That's a question to ponder on as you go back home. Would you just begin to scan? But friends, be a mature Christian, stick to one church, be a good Bible student and be found in a fellowship of brethren. Stick to one church that will help you to grow within your Christian faith. Stop moving from one point to another. Because God will help you understand his word as you desire, as you intentionally stick to that word to understand it. Stop meandering, stop wavering from left, right, center. You will be a good person. You will do well in your Christian faith. Worship team, as we keep coming, allow me to pray. Could you rise up on your feet, eh? congregation? Loving Father, just lift up your voices. I know some of us, we may have fallen victims without knowing. Perhaps you came to the city looking for a job, but because the job was not getting faster, you may have walked all over seeking for solution, ended up a prey in these cults. Some people shed blood. 
they are cut and they, they mean they, their blood is removed from their bodies because they are just entering into covenants. And perhaps you may have entered a covenant in these cultic practices. Please, God is calling you for total repentance. Just, every person, just lift up your hand and just begin to pray that God is going to bless you. God is going to guide you in this world of challenges. You are going to overcome every kind of cultic practices in the mighty name of Jesus.